Here we're going to take a couple of minutes exploring how we can work with the tone curve panel, which is located inside of the develop module. Here you'll notice that we're working with this file grayscale.psd. And a lot of times it's helpful to work with a simple grayscale file and apply adjustments to it so that we can kind of deconstruct or reverse engineer how these adjustments actually work and how we can effectively work with these controls. Well, one of the things that you'll notice right from the get-go is that the tone curve panel is pretty interesting. It divides up our adjustments into different regions. Here we have our shadows, our darks, our lights, and then also our highlights. Now we can make changes either by simply clicking and dragging, or we can also make the same change by using the slider here. Well, you may notice that when you make an adjustment, there's a grayed out area, and it limits your adjustment to that area. Think of that grayed out area or that little shadow as a safety net. It's saying, hey, this is how far you can modify the highlights. Now, as we make changes and as we look at the grayscale, we notice primarily we're affecting the upper range of this grayscale. Now, what limits how far this adjustment reaches or what limits how far we can go? Well, by default, this particular type of curve has this built-in adjustment, but in addition, these different quadrants also control how far we can go. For example, let's do something drastic. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this point over. Well, here you can see the shadow area for my highlights is now much bigger. It's a much broader reaching adjustment. So as I make that change, you can see I'm affecting much more of the photograph. So we can control these adjustments in some pretty unique ways. Now to reset these points, double click them. That will then take those back to their default settings. Well, what about the regions? Well, you can reset those by double clicking the triangle icons, or if you've made some various adjustments, you can also hold down Option on a Mac, Alt on Windows, and then click on Reset Region to take this all back to normal. Now, another way that we can make adjustments is we can use the Target Adjustment Tool. To use that tool, simply click on it, hover over your image, and then click and drag up or down in order to affect that particular area of the photograph. And here you can see I'm making unique modifications to those different areas. Well, how then can we preview what we've done? Well, all that we need to do is to click on this flip switch. There's before, and then there's after. Okay, well, let's go ahead and reset these adjustments. We'll do that by holding down Option on a Mac, Alt on Windows. We'll click on Reset the Region. All right, well, there's also something else that we can use here, which is actually really quite interesting and quite powerful. What you can do is click on this icon down below. That will then take this to a very different type of a curve. You'll notice it looks like we still have these quadrants in the background. We have the histogram showing up there. But we can make many more adjustments. For example, we can work here in the highlights, and I'm just going to set points as I go. You're noticing that I'm setting points in a much more freeform way. And I can adjust specific areas and make really drastic adjustments in the same way that we can set specific points and make drastic adjustments with curves in Photoshop. In other words, this gives us the flexibility and control that we need in order to make adjustments that are much stronger, much less limited than in our previous view. Now in this case, let's say that what you want to do is you want to work on one of these points. Well, you can click on that, then drag it to the edge in order to remove that. Notice that I'm dragging these points off here, and I'm just clicking and dragging those to the edge of the frame in order to remove those points. Well, to add them, we can simply click in an area and then drag one way or another. We can also add points by using the Target Adjustment tool. And here's where things get interesting. We can simply click to set different points here. And as we click to set those points, we can then go back and forth and modify just a specific area of the photograph. Notice how I'm just affecting that area of the image and then this area here. Again, so I have a very distinct and different type of an adjustment. We also have a few presets that we can use as well. If you go over to Point Curve, here we can choose Linear to bring this back to a straight line. Or we can use Medium Contrast, a subtle little S-curve, or Strong Contrast. Now the nice thing about this is we can take this and then even push this a little bit further if we want to. I'll go ahead and modify those points just like that. All right, well, so far so good. Let's evaluate. Here we have it before and then now after. If ever you want to switch back to the other type of functionality, all that you need to do is to simply click on this icon. That will then go back. And here, what we can do is continually make changes. And in this case, we'll go ahead and make changes one way or another. So again, the nice thing about this is that we can continually modify this. And we can choose which type of curve works best for us 
And keep in mind that you can do all those things that you could do in Photoshop in regards to moving these points, the end points, adding points, and also modifying real specific areas of our photographs. All right, well, now that we've been introduced to the Tone Curve panel, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use this in a photograph, and we'll do that in the next movie.